This is part two of the BenQ Design or Display PD3220U test. In part one, what I have done is gone in and used the X-Rite i1 Display Pro along with the i1 Profiler software to run a uniformity test across many of the color modes that the PD3220U ship with. The conclusion from part one is that sRGB and Display P3 are the two color modes that has the best uniformity across the entire panel. So in this video, I'm going to use the X-Rite i1 Display Pro along with their i1 Profiler software to run a software calibration on all the color modes that I've done the uniformity test in part one and see which color mode is going to be the best one for us to do a software calibration on the PD3220U. I'm Arch Suensang, BenQ Ambassador, and let's get started. Before we start, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated when I upload new contents. So I have spent over three hours calibrating this BenQ PD3220U and all the color modes that I have done the display uniformity tests on. And here's the result from the uniformity test. But before I go on, let me tell you my method of testing. For this video, or for these tests, I'm actually using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro along with the i1 Profiler software. And the version for the i1 Profiler is 3.1.1. So these are the validation results from all the calibrations in the different color modes. Let's first start with Display P3. In Display P3, what we have here is an average delta E of all the patches being 1.9, with the maximum delta E for all the patches being 4.96. It's a little bit on the high side in this case, however, it still passes the validation or our standard of any delta E value below 5 is consider a good display. Also considering that the average is actually below 2, this is actually a fantastic display and a great color mode to run your color calibration on. Now keep in mind too is that with this display P3 color mode, you're also getting greater color uniformity across the board as well because BenQ have calibrated this for a higher uniformity. So let's go ahead and look at sRGB. In this case, the sRGB, when I'm using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, my measurement results a little bit high is 2.08, which is still really great. Something to keep in mind too is that BenQ NQ have guaranteed a calibration result for these PD lines of the display of a delta E value of less than 3 once you calibrate it. In this case, it still passes the delta E value just fine. The thing with using sRGB is that we get a maximum delta E for all the patches of 6.75, which is a little bit high in this case, and I actually did run a few tests, and the number was a little bit high in the sRGB mode, which is something that I probably would keep in mind in this case, I may not do an editing or actually do the calibration in sRGB mode so much. But something that's very interesting though, is that I've actually also run a calibration in sRGB mode using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro Plus, which is this device right here. And the i1 Display Pro Plus is supposed to be much more sensitive than the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. And this is their latest release model. So with that, using the i1 Display Pro Plus in sRGB, I'm able to get the delta E average across all the patches at 1.99, with the maximum delta E for all the patches still being 6.5. And that's really just only one or two patches that's actually that high, but the average is actually much better than using the i1 Display Pro. So in this case, if you have the i1 Display Pro Plus, or if you're thinking about getting the i1 Display Pro Plus, I think that spending a little bit more for this new device is gonna be a worthwhile investment in this case, because because the result, as is shown here, is already better. Let's go ahead and move on here. Let's take a look at DCI-P3 color mode. Now, interestingly enough, in DCI-P3 color mode, I'm able to get an average delta E in this case of 1.92 and the maximum delta E for all the patches at 4.84, which is really quite in line and as good as the display P3. The only thing with DCI-P3 color mode is that it's not calibrated from the factory for a greater uniformity. So now let's take a look at Adobe RGB. With Adobe RGB, the average on all the patches is 1.8, with the maximum for all the patches being 4.61. Amazingly enough, this value is a little bit lower than DCI P3 or even Display P3 in this case. And, you know, it's all within line of each other. I wouldn't say this is good or bad at all. They're all within line of each other. So it's telling us that Adobe RGB can also be a mode that you can use to calibrate your display on as well. Let's take a look at M-Book Color Mode now. With M-Book Color Mode, BenQ have calibrated their display so that it actually looks very similar to an uncalibrated Apple built-in display. Because all of Apple displays from the factory are calibrated to DCI-P3, so what BenQ have done is actually tweak their colors so it matches with Apple DCI-P3 factory calibration. In this case, when we try to run a custom calibration on here, what we're getting is an average delta E for all the patches of 2.29, with the maximum delta E for all the patches of 4.84. 
before. In this case, all the delta E are still below the tolerance of what BenQ have listed in terms of the average delta E, so we're still really good on this one. Next up is Rec 709. These are for all of you guys that are video editors out there who wants to use in Rec 709 color space. So in Rec 709, the average delta E for all the patches is 1.91, with the maximum delta E for all patches being 7.15. That's fairly high in this case for the maximum delta E for some of the patches. And in this case, let's take a look at one of the patches here that's a little bit on the higher end. For example, we have the green value being just a touch higher than the rest. And you know the rest are still you know below two, which is okay. But that's just something to keep in mind too, is that if you're gonna use Rec 709, I would make sure that you run the calibration and make sure that you get the colors that you want from Rec 709. Lastly, let's go ahead and look at the user mode. This is a user RGB. This is the one where I've actually gone in and changed the red, green, and blue output of the display so that the color temperature match so that on the x right calibration software, it gives me a check mark on all the red, green, and blue um, color output. So in this case, the average delta E for all of them is 1.89, with the maximum delta E of all patches being 4.52. So based on the result here, the best color mode to do a software calibration on this PD3220U, I would have to say it's going to be Display P3. Yes, the maximum Delta E for all the patches is higher than the rest, but here's the case. The average Delta E being 1.9, that's really good. And the other thing too, like I mentioned before in this video, is that Display P3 color mode has greater uniformity across the entire panel. So this is going to be the best color mode to calibrate your BenQ PD3220U on. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing here. So what I have here is Mac OS X Color Sync Utility. And what I have right now selected is sRGB. What I'm gonna do here is go ahead and set sRGB as the color space that we're gonna compare everything else to because this display has been calibrated from the factory and is guaranteed to have 100% sRGB. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the different color modes here down the list and see how that looks compared to sRGB. Number one, let's go ahead and take a look at Adobe RGB. So when we calibrate, our display here using Adobe RGB color mode, we can see that the color space is actually much larger than sRGB with some of the short side being the blue and the reds in this case. But again, that's just the nature of calibration as many times you're gonna change the RGB primary or the wedge a little bit when you do the calibration. Next, let's take a look at the DCI-P3 color space. If we start to take a look at DCI-P3 color space, the wedge is extremely large here in this case. So you're getting a really large color space here that engulfs sRGB, which is actually fantastic. It just shows that this display can show much more colors. Let's go ahead and use Display P3, and Display P3 is our pinnacle color mode that we said that it is the best color mode to run a software calibration on. And based on what I see here, Display P3 for the most part beside maybe some of the little areas here and beside the green and the yellow and also in this area here, some of the blues. For the most part, Display P3 looks like a good profile and looks like it will cover entirely the sRGB color space in this case. So that's also a really good color space to go in and calibrate your display on. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few other color modes here. Let's go ahead and check out mbook. mbook color mode, amazingly enough, engulfs in the entire sRGB color space. The problem that I have with mbook is that based on my calibrations numerous times already, uh, my delta E value is a little bit higher than I like it to be. It's still under three, which still passed, but in this case, I generally like my delta E value to be less than two. Let's go ahead and look at Rec 709. So this Rec 709 color space is for videographer's usage or anybody who's doing video. And if you take a look at Rec 709, yes, it is a little bit off from sRGB, but it is about the sRGB color wedge. And this is about normal because Rec 709, it's literally the sRGB of photography. So for video, this looks pretty good for Rec 709. Now the thing is this, let's go ahead and take a look at my sRGB calibration using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. So with the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, the sRGB color space is wedged a little bit differently here in this case, and it doesn't cover some of the areas fully. It covers some of the areas more, for example, the green and the blues in this case. Also, it covers more of the red, a lot more of the red here that you can see, but it's also lacking some of the purple and the blues and some of the greens as well. So these are just something to think about when you're using sRGB color space. Let's bump it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sRGB with the i1 Display Pro that gave us a really good Delta E result. 
and we can see here that it's very similar to the one that came before it. Uh, it shifts a little bit where it shows a little bit more colors in the orange, but otherwise very similar to the sRGB result. Lastly, let's go ahead and look at the user RGB mode. So this is when I've gone in and set the display into user mode and changed the RGB output individually. And we can see here that this color wedge is so large. In fact, if I hold this for comparison right now, let's go ahead and do that. It actually engulfed display P3 a little bit. So it's a little bit large in the display P3 even. And also is as large as DCI P3. So that's something very interesting there to note about these color spaces. Again, I still think that display P3 in this case is probably going to be the best mode for you to use based on my calibration result. Now, something to keep in mind too is that if you use a different device, for example, if you use a spider device, your, ver your result may vary. I would definitely run a validation and also pull your color up in color sync utility in Mac OS X just to see how the color space is looking comparing relatively to all the color space. Last thing that I want to mention here is I want to go and highlight Adobe RGB a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this Adobe RGB color wedge for comparison. And I want to point out the BenQ 3220U and Adobe RGB. The thing here is this, this display is guaranteed 100% sRGB. That means the color space is only going to go as large as sRGB. This if we're looking at a color wedge right now, is this Adobe RGB color space? Yes, it follows the wedge of Adobe RGB color space really closely. But what it really comes down to with this panel is that we're looking right now at about maybe 75 to 78 percent the volume of Adobe RGB. So you can still set this display to Adobe RGB color mode, but you're not going to be able to get 99% Adobe RGB like the BenQ SW line. And that's something to keep in mind too, is that if you need to do editing in the largest color space possible, I would probably look at the SW line in this case. So I hope that you find this information on which color mode to best do a software calibration on your PD3220U helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated when I upload cool new videos like this. And until next time, art is right. Why? My brain's not working today. Oh that's why I said I'm gonna do a video where I say whatever I want. Yeah. Color profile. It's gonna be called D65. Art, art is rogue. <laughs> oh, that would be a good domain yeah. name. I already have opinionated banana registered. Oh my gosh. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fine, don't go. <laughs> Sorry, he's lost it.